It's so weird sitting at airports and traveling again. It kind of feels normal, like the way the world was before it was shut down during lockdown. But it was during lockdown when I was frustrated with not being able to get out there and explore that Just to See How Far It Is was born. And uh, it was a, a project, a passion project, I'd say, that really changed my life. I just cannot believe that it's taken me three years and I'm still waiting to get back on the road again. I never thought that would happen. And the reality is that, I guess, relying on manufacturers for cars and always being dependent on other people means that it's not just get in your car and go and do what you want to do when you want to do it. So the dream hasn't died. Um, I've actually sent out an email now today while I'm sitting at the airport uh, presentation where I've gone and tweaked things a little bit because I still really do believe in just to see how far it is. So fingers crossed that we get a positive response to this one and we can finally get on the road again. Um, thanks so much for your message and um, yeah just to see how far it is season one was was epic we really loved um, going along on that adventure with you and um, it's really exciting to see season two is in the works so for sure uh, we'd love to be there for season two as well um, so yeah please get hold of me when you can and, uh, and let's chat through the details and take this thing forward Wow what a message. I uh, can't believe it, actually. It's, I'm, um, I'm jumping for joy on the inside, okay? Just believe me on this, but also just a little bit, a little bit overwhelmed because as we've been trying for a long time eh, to get this thing back on the road. And I remember coming back after season one and it was such an incredible, unexpected experience. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. This is what I want to do. It's amazing. And you think that you've done a pretty good job, you know, telling the story and yeah, then you mission and mission and mission trying to get it back on the road again and I suppose self-doubt steps in you think, well, maybe it wasn't so great after all, <laughs> maybe it wasn't that much fun to watch. So to get that message now from Ryan and the guys at General Tires is just, it's relief, that's what it is. It's like, yeah, belief in a concept, you know, it's, it's so cool and I mean, they were there in season one, they were along for the ride. And I suppose now, come to think of it, they are the right. They're the ones that are getting just to see how far it is back on the road. So I'm absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm so chuffed. It is so cool. It's, yeah, it's a little bit freaky because I've got a lot of planning to do. Like a lot. But we're on the road, yes. <laughs> So what is different with season two? Well, for starters, this. Pretty cool, eh? We are going adventuring in my very own car. I think the reality is if we are serious about this lifestyle, then you've got to be all in and fully committed to it. So I bought this from my dad. He's had it from new, short wheelbase, Gen 3, 3.2 DRD, superb car. Only 250,000 Ks in the clock, which is nothing. You all know how formidable these vehicles are and capable over landing and off-roading. It's never done any dirty work, so mechanically in absolute mint condition. The paintwork needed some uh, needed some love and attention, so we had it resprayed. This is actually the original color of it, but um, I am so excited about it because what it means is I'm not reliant on manufacturers or other people's vehicles. Whatever work we do, whatever upgrades we do, it's on my vehicle. You know, I'm committed to that. And uh, it means that we don't always have to be planning these massive epic overlanding adventures. But if we feel like getting away for the weekend, we can. Open the garage door and let's go. What else is different? Well, you may recall season one, we uh, left Port Elizabeth and we adventured west. This time, we're calling it Eastern Expectations. So out of Port Elizabeth, we're heading up the east coast. 
So you're talking Transkei, Lesotho, Zululand, Pongola, Mpumalanga, you name it, we're going to go and explore. I am so excited and so are they. This is kind of where the adventure starts, eh? Best drive here in uh, Newton Park. And getting the right tyres on the car, happy days. Long How's time. How's it you? Long time. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yes, self. Good. Yes. Happy. Where are we going? In here. We're going straight over that one there for you. Good man. Am I, allowed, am I allowed to kiss you? Please don't. Not oh, again. Just, just, just one. Not, 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 not again. You actually do realize you've, you, 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 made a, you made this guy quite emotional, right? Because you know how long this, just to see how far it is, season two's been on the cards. Thank you. It feels you. like 10 years. It's three. Okay. Thank you, dude. Okay. It's, it's, it's oh, going to be I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. memorable again. So that, that's probably a good place to start. Why? Why? I understood season one, it was kind of a no-brainer because we were with Isuzu and you guys were obviously OEM fitment for them. But why, why come on the road with us again? Well, I think that's where it started, was, was having that natural partnership that we had with Isuzu. It was a good combination. And then obviously yourself saying, well, let's go and do an adventure. The, the man off the street. Um, we didn't want to go any place that would be too extreme. And that's exactly what the rest of it is. And it worked. Yeah. So having the learnings from the first time and seeing how we can adjust it, it's going to be even more epic. Last year going in the Trans Sky, I mean, you guys really are pushing that whole brand about adventure is possible, anywhere is possible. You can go and do that. We were showcasing all the new tyres. So it, I suppose it does feel like a good fit. It does. And there's a tyre for everything. Yeah. So yes, you can go anywhere. Obviously, depending on where you go, you're going to fit this or you're going to fit that. Or, and our range covers that. We've got a, an SUV tyre, which is the GT Plus. So that's a, what we call a 9010, and that's typically something that needs um, a higher speed rating, more performance oriented. However, it's still got enough robustness built in for gravel and, and various other surfaces. And then you move to the 83, which covers so many different diverse applications. That's it's very good on the road. That's what, that's what I ran in in season one. And I mean, we did 5,000 Ks, not one puncture. It was actually unbelievable. That was that's and, proper. And even better than that is the 83 that was fitted to your vehicle was the standard, what we call standard construction. You get a light truck construction version of the 83 that looks identical on the outside. More robust. But it's much more robust for higher load, um, for uh, an application that is more required for off-road. Okay. And then you get the ATX, and that's a more aggressive 50 all-terrain. Um, almost a little bit more biased towards mud terrain in terms of the styling. Um, and what it can do off-road. And then for the, the really niche guy that really wants to do overlanding, uh, we've got the X3, the Or the guy from Pretoria that wants to park, kick it out, double cab with those tires. That's what they do. I'm assuming we're putting on ATX. Why have you chosen that as the tire? So the beauty about the ATX is it's still a 50-50 all-terrain. It's got excellent road manners. Um, it will give you all the confidence that the AT3 does in the, in the wet and dry on the road. But when you go off-road, now this is a light truck construction tire. Okay. It's only available as an LT. So higher loads, it's got a more robust construction. Um, and essentially will give you the protection and the confidence and peace of mind that you need if you really get into rough stuff. You can see the sidewall design here. It's more equipped to deal with you know, things that would penetrate, that it can deflect. Um, it's got a stronger sidewall and it's also got what we call the shoulder pad. So it just gives it a little bit more rubber and a uh, more robust shoulder. The outer white lettering or the white lettering is so important now because it's curb appeal. That's what, the guy, that's what the guy wants to see. It came in blue. That's obviously not the color. <laughs> the blue is really to protect it in transport okay. um, so that the white doesn't get too badly scuffed. And then, you know, a little bit of a, a, a soft sponge or while you drive it will come off again. It, it gives it that presence. It really does. What are these little holes I've seen, I've seen on the tires? What is so, that? So this is a, a tyre that we've also um, produced for the US market. Yeah. Um, and there, as you know, they have a lot of snow, ice. It needed to be studdable. 
If you remember season one was lockdown and the whole inspiration with the series was to promote living local, loving local, exploring local, general tires, media in Port Elizabeth, keeping everything local, it's, it's cool. It's a, it's a wonderful story. Um, we're proud of the, the footprint that we have in Africa. We have a four by four hub where we produce these tires. They get exported to the US, Europe, and this is an important tire, as is the rest of our range. And I think what I like about this, well, we obviously, I'm running on 16s, you know, and we've seen all the tires are moving to like 18s, 19s, 20s, but when you want to go overlanding, 16 is still where you want to be. And 17. Yeah. Are you happy with my choice of vehicle? Because you also drive a Pajero. Yeah. I'm very happy. I think it's a, it's a brilliant vehicle. Uh, we know where these things were designed and they came from yeah. Dakar. Yeah. Um, so the underpinnings, it's a solid vehicle. That's why I'm excited about doing this. I'm not dependent on anybody. It's my vehicle, whatever we do That's is... That's exactly what the man in the street would do. Yeah. You'll see what he's got. How does he make that work? Yeah. What is his budget? He's going to need good tires. He's going to need a few other little things. Yeah. Um, and I think that's going to be a nice, a nice journey to be involved in, in how the vehicle transforms. Well, talking about that journey, this is where it starts. We're starting from the ground up. So I've got the right rubber, but I think there's still a bit of work that I've got to get done before this car is ready to go overlanding. Yep, maybe paint it white. I'm not painting it, dude. This is, fa this is standard. How is it painted white? I'm original. Can't you get matching seat covers? But now the work starts. Now I've actually got to go and get this car ready to roll. But so yeah, we're going to have lots of fun and thank you, bud. Pleasure. Always happy. There's a lot of work that I've got to do if I want to take this for 31 days on the road. Um, no ways are we geared up. I don't have dual battery systems, I don't have anything like that. Now in season one, I met uh, Reyna and George from LA Sport here in the Eastern Cape. Such cool looks. And I think for me, if I want to get on the road again, they're the only guys I trust to do the right work. So I thought I'd pop in and catch up with, uh, with Reyna, have a chat and see what clever ideas he has. But I absolutely love coming here because they've always got such cool cars and fun projects. And the best part is my car is going to be one of those fun projects. Is the car you're going with? Do you have to say it like that? No. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? No, it's an awesome vehicle. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the older vehicles as well. It still looks in a great nick, so yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be a fun project to work on an older vehicle. It was my dad's old car. Yeah. So I know the history. It hasn't gone overlanding off-road ever. Do you get to do much on older stuff? We do get them every now and then, but there's this, this stigma out, you know, out there that a lot of guys don't want to spend on the older vehicles because they feel the sessions that they're putting on you know, is more expensive than the vehicle itself, yeah. so they don't think it's worth it. I don't want to go and take a million rand vehicle overlanding. You put all this kit on, but it's also now your daily driver. Yes. For me, if I go and take a car like this, if it parks in the garage and I'm not using it. You, you, you know what I mean? Then you don't mind going and doing adventure stuff. And I like the old tech, because I think if things go wrong in the bush, yeah, it's right. there's no the electronics and everything else. Okay, so remember in season one, we did the West Coast and, and rooftop tents and all that sort of vibe. I want to do the East Coast now, but what I was thinking is not doing a rooftop tent. So I want to okay. try and see if I can source a, a 4x4 trailer, because that's always the Mursa debate. Yeah, I think what do you go with? It's never been settled. Exactly. So I want to try and weigh in now with some comments on that. What else do we need to do here? See, with the older vehicles, there's usually a bit of a challenge that, that there's a lot of upgrading that needs to be done. Like the first thing that we need to start with, I can see it's low, is, is we need to start with the suspension. How often should you do that? Your, your, your coil springs usually give you a, a longer lifetime, you know. Um, they're usually about 135,000, 150,000, you know, they, they're still good. But your shocks, as a rule of thumb, 70 to 90,000 Oh, jeez, so we way, so we way, way over yeah. Way over. This suspension was due for upgrade years ago. Yeah. So if you combine the correct tires, the correct suspension with the correct race, and the complete bumper, you know, off-road bumper with, the, with your approach and descending angle, for four by four driving, you're ninety percent there. So, so and it looks cool too. Yeah, it looks way better. Yeah. <laughs> you're definitely gonna need a fridge. I've got that one from season one, but it's a ninety liter. It's, if I, it's never gonna fit no, in here. No, we're gonna have to look at something smaller, maybe like. Maybe a, that goes in the trailer. Yeah, I would use the ninety in the trailer. Yeah. 
And I would you say a 50 or 55 liter? I would think it's not necessary, but because I must now remember, I'm splitting. Yeah. You know, I might leave base camp and go, and you know, th then it is it is a cool thing to have. I just wanted you to get your head around because in my mind, I saw this little shelf thing. So that's something you guys can do. Yeah, I'll leave it with me. I'll design something, okay. and we can take it from there. And dual battery system yeah. is a is a for me. It's, that's like that's crucial. Let's see if on the inside if we if we have space there. Because that would be, I mean, because that's normally where you would put it, eh? Yeah, I would, I would actually, you know, prefer that we're trying to get it in here. Um, due to the fact because it's a smaller vehicle and don't have space. Can that work? Yeah, yeah, here's a good cavity. Um, I think if we just change the aircon pipes a bit, we will usually fit a um, 105 amp deep cycle here then. You know, with your whole battery management system. Then we'll fit a few plug points where you can plug in your fridge, your lights, your drone charging and everything, yep. everything will go. Will but that's, there. that's cool. We need to fit a compressor in here. Uh, the, no good you have these new proper tires, yeah, yeah, can't yeah. do anything with them. But it's always, it's, it's something I've always found puzzling, you, you, you can't be overlanding without that. We were asked a question one, one day, what is the first thing that you have to have in your vehicle when you go overlanding? And then we came to the conclusion, the first thing that you have is, is more of the cheaper kind of stuff. You need a compressor, you need a tire repair kit, and you need a recovery kit. That is the three things that you must have in your vehicle. As you know, we made jokes in season one, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not an overlanding type of oaks. I would dig if we can go and do stuff like that. If you can show me those, like, like we, we do like, I don't know, I suppose like a bush mechanic type vibe. Show me how to plug tires, show me how to change those. I think not only for me, if I am in the cuck, but I think for, uh, for the guys that watch as well, it's something they can learn. So can yeah. we look at putting something like that together? Might take us a while to educate you, but yeah, I think we'll be able to do it. <laughs> Thanks, and on we'll that note, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm... I, okay. So, so leave the vehicle with me. Okay. Let me draw up all the plans. Let Happy. me get all the stuff that we, that we need, and then then we we'll take it from there. Right now, it's just it's it's just like it was like a no no brainer for me that I come back to you guys after after season one because like. We had a good time. We had a good laugh. I know the surfboard, <laughs> I know the surfboard cuck irritated you. It was a good joke. But yeah, I just know the quality of work that you guys do. So I mean, yeah, it would be awesome to have you, have you help me out. Let's roll it out and take it from there. Cool. So Reyna and the guys have had uh, the Pajero for a week now. And uh, oh, I can't wait to show you. This isn't going to be a surprise for me because trust me, I've been popping in uh, every couple of days just to check and monitor the progress. So that is why I'm so excited because I know what I'm about to reveal. You guys won't believe that this is the same car. Take a look. Got this massive grin on my face because I actually cannot believe how incredible the Pajero. It's, it's, it's not even the same car. It's unreal, the transformation. And yeah, you, know, you, you, you get a bit emotional because you've got these ideas in your head. And yeah, this is my baby. This is my pet project just to see how far it is. And you know, I think just to Reno and, and his entire team, there have been so many hands on this car and the incredible advice they've given and listening to my crazy ideas and saying, mm, okay, but maybe try and do it like this. Uh, they've just been superb and this transformation is, is incredible and, and it's my car. 
like we are going on the road in this. I don't have to give this back. And I think that is what's the most exciting for me. But I think the best thing about coming to uh, LA Sport Eastern Cape is I always end up leaving with a smile on my face. We have such a good time when we're here. The guys have been amazing. We're going on the road. Can't wait. Boom, boom, boom.